गुड मॉर्निंग कंटिन्यूंग विद द चैप्टर फाइव टूडे वो विल डिस्कस रीहीटिंग ऑफ स्टीम देन वाई विल गो फॉर रीहीटिंग ऑफ स्टीम बाय रीहीटिंग द स्टीम सो वी विल गो फॉर रीहीटिंग द स्टीम दैट मीन्स फ्रॉम दर वी आर यूजिंग टू टू टर्बाइन फॉर रीहीटिंग द स्टीम द फर्स्ट टर्बाइन देन वी विल द स्टीम विल बी एक्सपांड देन आफ्टर एक्सपांसन ऑफ द स्टीम द एक्जिट ऑफ दैट विल बी सेकेंड टू द सेकेंड टर्बाइन तो फ्रॉम दैट द exhaust of the steam that will be come from the second that will be sent to the condenser so reheating means we are using two turbines and there are two stages of turbine first stage of turbine and second stage of turbine where we are expanding the steam and what what is the benefit we got by expanding the turbine in the uh, in two turbines that uh, what you got the you can remove the excess moisture from the turbine so that it will eliminate the uh, corrosion resistance or it will eliminate the corrosion okay, of the turbine blend so reheating is designed to take advantages of higher boiler pressure we are increasing the boiler pressure which will remove the excessive moisture content of the exhaust steam okay so when the steam is expand in the two number of stages number of stages, two number of stages that is stage 1 In stage two of the turbine, two turbines are used. Then each stage of expansion, steam is reheated in the boiler. So from the first turbine, when the steam will be expanded, that will be again reheated in the turbine, and then it will be sent to the second turbine. Then it will be expanded, and after the second turbine expansion, it will be sent to the condenser, and the cycle will be increased. And a low reheat pressure may be bring down the mean temperature of the heat addition, and hence the cycle efficiency. Again, high reheat pressure increases the moisture content of the exhaust, so optimum reheat pressure is necessary for that. Okay. Uh, then, the reheat cycle process will be we will discuss the uh, TS and HS diagram later. So, what will happen in the reheat cycle? If you see, so this is the superheated steam from the boiler will be sent to the high pressure turbine, where the high pressure superheated steam will be expanded. and after expansion it will be sent to the reheater that means in the boiler then after reheat it will be sent to the low pressure turbine and after expansion the low pressure turbine sent to the condenser her condenser will be uh, rejecting the heat sent to the pump and pump to filter so if you have to draw the diagram of the ts diagram then what is the ts diagram so in the ts diagram sorry this is the hs diagram So in the HS diagram, these are the constant pressure line. You can say here this one is your boiler pressure, this one is your intermediate pressure, and this one is your also condenser pressure PC or P3. Okay. So in the first turbine, the first not at the boiler exit is your superheated steam. So in the superheated steam, it will be expand from one to two. So it will come what dry saturated steam. Then again it will be reheat. When it will be reheat, so see here if it will be expand in the one turbine, then the moisture content will be here. X two will be here. Then after reheating, what will happen? The quality of steam will be increases. Is or no? So that uh, to eliminate the moisture content, that is the reason. That after reheating, the moisture content will be decreases. And four to five heat rejection will be here in the condenser. The heat rejection will be there. And five to six, that is your pump. As entropy comes, and six to one is your heat addition. So here. Here two heat addition is there. One is your six to one heat addition in the boiler, and here also two to three heat addition in the what? In the reheater. Reheating heat addition in the boiler also. So there is two reheating, and we are getting turbine work here. In the high pressure turbine, two turbine work we got. Here also one high pressure turbine. So if I have to calculate the net turbine work, will be your what? Net turbine work will be your Work done in the high pressure turbine plus work done in the low pressure turbine. So if you have to calculate the heat input, so what is your heat input? That is heat added. Heat added in the process of six to one plus heat added in the process of what? Two to three. That is your reheating. Okay. So this one and what is the heat rejection? That four to five, and pump work is the six to five, five to six. Okay, this is the uh, this will be the what? This will be the HS diagram. So if you go for draw the TS diagram, what will be the TS diagram? So it is there. 
here. Then now we can draw the TS diagram. So in the TS diagram, temperature entropy diagram. What is that? This is your vapor dome. And this is your constant pressure line. This is your constant pressure line. Then superheated steam 1 to 2 expansion. Then 2 to One to two is your expansion. One to two expansion. Then two to three. Then three to four. Then four to five. Then five to six. And six to one. Okay. So that is what that is the TS diagram of what TS diagram of your uh, your reheat uh, cycle. Or reheat vapor power cycle. So, what is the amount of heat addition that uh, that is your heat added in the six to one? That is H one minus H six and H three minus H two. H three minus H two and H one minus H three. That is your heat addition. And what is your turbine work? You can see here turbine is your H one minus H two plus H three minus of H four. That is your turbine work. What is your pump work? H six minus H five. So you can say here B B five of P2 minus P1, P2 minus P1, then W net is W to P minus W P. So from here we can calculate the rate that is W net by Q in or 1 minus Q out by Q in. Okay. Then we will discuss here. So what uh, what we will get from after uh, reheating? What is the advantages we got? So it will be. Uh, it is very less to gain in thermal efficiency by the rate and quality of exhaust steam is improved. First, which your quality of exhaust steam is improved. You can see in, uh, that in the HS diagram also. And mean temperature of heat addition is also increases by including the number of expansion and reheating process. Thus, the thermal efficiency of the cycle would be further increasing. So, we are reheating two times. So, for that only the work done will be increases and the thermal efficiency also increases. Then we will go for regenerative cycle. What is regenerative cycle? So here we are discussing regenerative cycle with open field water heater. Okay, where the steam and water will be in direct contact type, the part of superheated steam. So which and uh, so what will be the reheat cycle? In the boiler, the water will be we get uh, the steam will get from the boiler that one. It will be expanded in the turbine. When it will be expanded in the turbine. So, some of the after the uh, during the expansion, some of the steam will be bleeding from the blood of from the turbine and it will be sent to the open field water heater. Okay, and after expansion, the whole steam will be sent to the condenser. From the condenser, the steam will be expand and the steam will the steam will be reject the heat. After rejecting the heat, it will be sent to the open field water heater through the pump. And here, what will happen here? The liquid will become in contact with the superheated steam. So when it will be come, come in contact, the water becomes heated, and steam after losing the heat of the steam, that will be here what? That will become liquid, and liquid after the exit of the open field water heater, what will get? The steam having high temperature and the water having low temperature, so the water will be get the steam or get the heat, and at the outlet of the open field water, what will get? Hot water. And this hot water will be sent to the boiler. So what will happen? The, here the amount of heat addition will be decreases. If you are increasing the heat of the water, that will be sent to the boiler. Then amount of uh, uh, heat addition will be decreases. Amount of heat addition will be decreases. The efficiency will be increases. Okay, that is the case. So see, in the regenerative, that is you are using open field water heater. When uh, which uh, steam, superheated steam, which entered the turbine at state one, that is there and is extracted from the turbine at an intermediate state at a two point we are extracting the steam from at the intermediate state okay then extracting steam is supplied to the heat exchanger known as your field open field water heater remaining amount of steam in the turbine expansion is complete to condenser and remaining amount of heat will be expanded in the turbine and it will be sent to the condenser okay then after condensation what we got a saturated liquid will got from the that after condensation, 
liquid steam will be condensed that we got saturated liquid this saturated liquid will be sent to the pump and it become hot the saturated liquid will be sent to the open field water heater through the pump and this open field water heater after heat exchanging between the superheated steam and the this saturated liquid then here we got here what then here got here hot water from the open field water heater and after losing the heat the steam uh, superheated steam it become water and due to direct mixing fluid water heater is called is your open uh, or direct contact type the portion of steam extra extracted is so adjusted to make the mixture leaving the field water at state 6 and now this is the uh, saturated water is at uh, pumped by high pressure pump in the boiler that is 6 to 7 with regeneration the average temperature at which heat is supplied be increased therefore ranking cycle will be increased so it got is your high temperature water from here and if it got then the boiler heat addition will be decreases what is the advantages so you can see here 1 to 2 1 to 3 is your expansion and we are bleeding of here bleed of m1 kg of so 1 kg of water will be supplied in the turbine so from here m1 kg will be extracted and what is left 1 minus m kg will be sent to the condenser and after condenser it become saturated liquid and this saturated liquid will be pumped to the open field water heater so it become what sub cool liquid then it will be sent to the open field water heater then this sub cool liquid become saturated liquid and this saturated liquid again pumped to the boiler through the and it become what pumped to the boiler so it become sub cool liquid and this sub cool liquid will be sent to the what that will be the boiler so that is the what ts diagram of your regenerative cycle that is the regenerative cycle what is again okay what is the advantages the advantages is to raise the temperature of feed water and saturation temperatures thus the amount of heat addition in the boiler is reduces see if you can see here if you can see here what will happen so if we are not reheat or not sent to the open field water then we got the water saturated liquid here and this sub cool liquid here and this sub cool liquid will be sent to the what that will be sent to the boiler so after open exchanging the heat in the open field water heater the temperature will be increases so that so when it will be at 5 point when the boiler en entering is a 5 point that means high heat required uh, some of the more heat will be required to in the boiler but when it will be at 7 point this point that means less amount of heat will be required in the boiler to produce the steam that means the amount of heat addition in the boiler will be what reduces okay so if the amount of heat addition in the boiler at a higher average temperature open field water it is soft as a deaerator so why it is called deaerator some of the non consumable chemical reaction and the air bubble will be absorbed by this so that is known as also your deaerator and extracting the steam from the turbine that is known as your bled off that is known as your what bled off we are bled off steam at the two point that is known as your bled off so that is your regenerative cycle thank you